I have a bit of a growl in my voice. Uh, yeah, you're turning calf feline. Loud. Oh. It's because you're not feline well. Oh, well, you do a good purr. That's a little disturbing. <laughs> sorry. Are you a furry? If you're Maybe, not, you I should mean, think about it. Oh, okay. I don't know. Oh, wait, you're recording this, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say yes, some I stuff. Yes, I am. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. This is Flaming Freedom live now via LRN. We are also live via Ustream for those who want to watch us on the cam, sitting around in front of microphones (laughs) with our bed hair and things like that on this lovely Sunday morning. But uh, it's there for you if you'd like. You can just go to flamingfreedom.com. On the left side of the page, click on the stream for Ustream. Click the link. It'll take you straight to Ustream. You can watch us. Get in the chat room and things like that. And you can now, that means that you can now call us. And the way to do that is to call via Skype to the account In Your Head Shows. So just put in In Your Head Shows and you can call us. And I'm glad I said that because I'm not running Skype right now. So Mm -hmm. I need to get, I need to actually be able to take your calls. So if you just, uh, in just a minute or two, you'll actually be able to reach us via Skype. This is your host, Dale. And Dason. And Lauren. So they, they were kind enough to join us after um, really exciting Saturday nights. <laughs> uh, should be should, fun. Should we talk about that? or if It's up to If you want to, you certainly can. Well, I, I think it, it relates to our uh, word, of the, word of the week, is it? Or the Urban Dictionary word of the week. Um, right. I actually still can't remember. You're going to have to help me out. Um, we keep losing our use. Uh, the little rep notes that would be awesome um but yeah it was it was quite the night um i'm i'm dressed a little funny because i had a a night where i didn't sleep at my house uh today ustream has decided to be a bitch so we're not gonna probably have a ustream today Hmm. Um, and the problem with that is it means that our video is going to be limited but oh well oh well well, yeah. If you want to get technical based off of whether it's easier to go after no sleep or a small amount, it all depends on how much. If you're lo- able to sleep long enough to go through a full sleep cycle and wake up while your brain is at certain wave levels, it's easier to go with the sleep. But if you're going to break in the middle of a sleep cycle, then it's easier to go without. Hmm. No, oh, yeah, I have heard about sleep cycles. I've heard like four hour increments roughly, but it varies from person to person. You can kind of figure out your own sleep cycle. It might be three hours for some people. So if you if you sleep for like an hour and then wake up naturally, that's probably helpful because it's your own cycle. Okay, that's cool. So <laughs> yeah. still uh, still you streaming over there, are we? Uh, no, um, I'm, re- but I think actually I think we're recording fine. So I think we'll still have a a, a show for people afterwards. So I apologize to those of you who are actually oh. trying to watch us via Ustream. Oh, good. It's being a bitch. Yeah. Oh, well. So that's is- um. But that's the other announcement for us. Uh, the, the first announcement is we are on LRN live again. And now that we have a time slot that works for us and that also works for LRN, that was the problem, by the way. I, I never wanted to go off of LRN. I just didn't have a time slot that worked for the schedule that we needed to have for the show. But... The other thing is that we, we are, is the new time slot. We are on 10 to 11.30 now on Sunday mornings, so we'll be interfering with church, which is perfect for this show because we, we're oh, trying to encourage people to be no. heathens, right? We want people to be religious heathens. No, we want people to yeah. be who they are, and we want to support that. And the other announcement, which I've partly said already, is, well, not ignorant, though. Not it. Not, well, all right. Let me finish the announcement. Well, so we'll talk about that. Right. <laughs> Hold that we thought. We want to also help them grow. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. into smarter people who don't have stupid religions. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So YouTube is the other announcement. You've heard it. We, there is now already uh, our first full length episode posted on YouTube. For, so for those of you who desperately want to watch us sitting at a table in front of our microphones instead of just listening to us, you can do that on YouTube now. It's also a great way to cross promote. You share those videos. A lot of people, uh, for some reason, want to see our ugly mugs on the screen. So go to YouTube, you can and hit subscribe and you can you'll you'll see us there our first episode full full episode on there. So a lot of stuff changing. 
and it's really exciting. There's a new promo. You'll hear it at the end of this episode. I uh, hope you like that. Let me know what you think. And speaking of speaking of um, staying up all night, and I can't remember what reminded me of this, but it was actually relevant. <laughs> you have to take my word for it. Dason, when I texted you earlier today, oh, yeah. I used my voice recognition in my phone. You, you actually texted me. Oh, that's right. I texted Lauren. That's you, right. You were like... Mm-hmm. Uh, was I was telling they? her that you were going to be joining us today, mm-hmm. and I said, I spoke your name very carefully because it's voice recognition and it's a name. It's not a common word usage or anything. So I said, Dason is joining us. And, Just like that. And it came out as? You'll love this. They sin. They sin. <laughs> yeah, two words. Mm. And I thought, they uh, sin, I sin, we all sin for Dason. Well, works for me. Yeah, I thought you'd like that. Good for Sunday, too. I figured, I figured you would get a kick out of that. Mm. So let's actually talk about LGBT topics from a liberty perspective. That's what yeah, the show is theoretically that. about. Now that we're here. Any of you who are new to, new to us and maybe hearing us for the first time on LRN, because that's, uh, that's what we're all about, sort of, although we veer all over the place. We end up venturing into all sorts of adult topics, and I don't really just want to talk about liberty. And we rarely just talk about liberty and politics and activism uh that's that's almost always in there but but i'm kind of interested in a lot in a lot of other aspects but it's mostly lgbt focused so this show is a sort of an adult oriented show we do venture into adult topics quite a bit as well too so be prepared for that we're going to blaspheme a lot on this sunday morning but uh, some of the things we'll talk about today are our urban dictionary word of the week i'm going to talk about a gay reddit guide a game called dysphoria which is really trying to convey the experience of being a male to female transgendered person and transgender person. Ooh. Um, I want to correct myself when I do that. Yeah. And it's, a, it's the new thing. It that's keeps... one of our topics as well. <laughs> oh, is that one of our topics? It is. I, I'm going to teach oh. you guys a grammar lesson. Oh, that's what the grammar lesson mm-hmm. is there. Okay. Cause that's the other thing. And then we got comment. We got a comment from about from, sorry, a comment about free keen from someone who is not a fan of Free Keen. And then shortly after that, the, a, a group called Stop Free Keen, which is an, a group specifically formed to oppose Free Keen, is, which is an activist group in Keene, New Hampshire, is reposting something of ours that was heavily edited, which is fine. I mean, I don't mind that much. I, I mean, to their credit, they did link to the unedited version. So, so I, and I suspect a lot of people are going to hear them cutting out over and over. It's very clear when they're cutting out things that we're saying. And I, I suspect people are going to want to hear the, the full version and they'll go do it. But uh, we'll talk about that as well later. And are video games are anti LGBT and should we care? So these are some of the things that if we get to them all, we'll get to today. And another announcement is that there's a Russian artist who's protesting Putin's homophobia in a performance piece in New York City called Crematorium. It looks really artsy, and I, I mean, it's the kind of thing I might get a kick out of, actually, if I was there. But it just kind of depends on how much they're charging for tickets and things. Um, but it definitely looks like very artsy and performance art piece, kind of. But uh, mm. it might be good, and there's some hot guys in it and everything. So if you're going to be in New York, maybe you can check out Crematorium. We'll have a link to it from today's show page. Go ahead, Lauren. I was going to ask if it was a, like a painting or, but it's actually performance art. No, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, like a, it's a play a dance or a play. Oh, it's wow. like a play basically. Okay. It's very artsy performance artsy sort of play mm. as opposed to, that's what it looks like from the previews. Cause there's a trailer. If you go to the website that I linked to from today's show page, you can see a, a trailer for it, essentially a piece of it. Very cool. Yeah. But you were saying, I think we were going to start it off. You were with talking, the word, the, Go ahead. You, well, you were talking about um, the the fact that I'm encouraging people to be smarter instead of religious by listening to us instead of church, instead of going to church on Sunday morning, right? Yes. Yes, I was. So w- why don't you tell us about that as soon as we come back, and we will be back very shortly here again on our first live episode of Flaming Freedom on LRN in a long time. So stick with us. This is Flaming Freedom. We'll be right back. I asked some of the biggest fans of Flaming Freedom where we discuss LGBT topics from a liberty perspective, what sorts of things they'd done to support the show. I've been mining butt coins since they were pennies apiece. I've donated thousands of dollars of butt coin to Flaming Freedom. I gave Dale my handicap placard. Pretty sure that's a felony. We handed over our firstborn. I don't 
know what they're up to with that boy, but I'm sure it's wholesome. There's too many buttons. I don't know which button you want me to push. I told you already it's a knob. Raise the gain on microphone too, you worthless brat. I have flamingfreedom.com tattooed across my labia. And I'm a prostitute, so all my clients see it. Wow, that's something. But there's a much easier way to show your appreciation. Just click like and share the episodes on your favorite social media networks. Oh, here we go with the wanting and the needing. And can you do this for me? And can you do that for me? My index mouse finger is all achy from the gout. I can't be We do put a lot of work into making a good show for you. Please just click like and share. That's all we ask. And we're back. This is Flaming Freedom. Glad to be with you on this Sunday morning blaspheming the uh, whole church going motion of Sunday morning and day of rest. And we're resting though. We're chilling out and resting and talking about stuff. So again, this is Flaming Freedom live to you via LRN, not live to you via Ustream at the moment. We'll work on that. <laughs> Maybe for the next show. This is your host, Dale. And Dason. And Lauren. So, Lauren, uh, let's talk about that. We're blaspheming right now. Uh, and, and you don't like no, it when you, I do that. You, well, you just like to pick on me because I don't like to pick on Christians. No, I love I, Christians. I'm not picking on you. I, I love playing off of you because you're so nice. And and it's good, too, because some I'm sure that like there's a lot of Christians out there going, yeah, Lauren, you tell him. And well, uh, I mean, they, I'm not, I'm not trying for to like, you. spread the, the gospel. Of, I know. But you but you want to be tactful and don't offend anyone. And I, I appreciate uh, that. That I don't know if I agree with. I don't know if I... I mean, I, I I lack tact, so <laughs> I disagree with that. I think you're very, you're quite tactful, hmm. and and I I you know you, you know me I'm often making an effort not to be tactful. How do you how do you do know. that? Because right, you actually have to have like a tactic or a tact. They thing. know I'm playing. All those Christians out there know I'm just poking fun. I never. They, they're, I, they're, they're, we're buddies. We're ribbing each other all the time. It's cool. Yeah, secretly he has a right? crucifix in his bedroom closet that he opens up. Yeah, hear the difference? Mm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there you go. There you are. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, they, Dason is uh, second time, right? Um, I no, think. this is like your third time. Oh, third time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, inch away. Yeah, there uh-huh. you go. Mm. Inch away from the microphone. Uh, oh, third time. Really? Yeah, because there, oh, the, there was the first time when I wasn't on, and then there was the second time when I was there, and now this is the third. All right. Yeah, his name. I'm looking at his... Uh, I'm looking at your name in the uh, hot, sorry, in the key keywords cloud, and it's bigger than I would expect. So there you go. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's only five letters. You are correct. You are you are three three times now. Hmm. Um, our website's very fancy, by the way. If you go to our website, you can do things like click on a, a host name and and pull up just the episodes that host was in. You can pull up a certain topic. You can click on Sabriel. You can click on Satanism. You can click on uh, Fetish. Uh, and you can see how much we've talked about different things according to the size of the word in the sound cloud and the keyword cloud or whatever. A tag cloud, I guess it's tags. And uh, But it's only it's only when we remember to tag something appropriately. It's, we, we mess up a lot. So yeah. on top of yeah. that, in there you can find an email. We digress. That you could message <laughs> us right. and tell us what you think about the topics that we choose. Yes, you can email us. You can also comment on any episode. But go ahead, Lauren. We were talking about uh, church church folks today. I guess so. I mean, I was going to comment on the fact that you just brought up Satanism, and I, I think we should have a discussion about that at some point. Oh, um, and I should be right. the one like calling you guys out or something, or we'll, we'll try to do okay. a role reversal. But. For now, we just, oh, we just, just stay on topic and yeah, uh, put it on next week's episode. Yeah, prep. All mm-hmm. right. So there you go. So tell us about the Urban Dictionary Word of the Week. Yeah, well, morning okay. after flats. Morning after flats. So um, I actually think that's really appropriate for today because you you all may notice that I'm wearing a dress, and this is probably the first time I've actually worn a dress on this show. Um, and that's because I've been out, and I may not have gone to my own bed last night. <laughs> um. <laughs> It's so funny that you not, picked this I, I, on this show. Yeah, I after know. After a night of almost no sleep. Well, and the other thing too is like I kind of I kind of made a, a post on Twitter about this and I was like, "Oh, I'm just going to stumble in the morning." And like it actually happened. Um and I had no intention of of doing so. Yeah. Um so here I am. Self-fulfilling prophecy. So morning after flats. Um it's generally a a type of shoe that a woman would wear 
that can kind of roll up and fit inside of her purse or inside of something that she might be carrying with her. Um, and it's useful for um, dealing with the walk of shame. Oh, right. Like yeah. if you were wearing high heels before when you were sober enough to walk in them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm someone who doesn't uh, do the walk of shame. I actually do the stride of pride, um, which is, <laughs> is way better. And uh, I, I walk a lot taller and it's, it's a great time. Um, but morning after flats are just a nice, comfortable shoe. So when you're, you're sort of a little uneasy and, and not, I can't quite get your balance, you can, you can still walk comfortably, whether it's across, you know, your college campus or, you know, down the middle of Manchester, but wherever you, Manchester, New Hampshire, that's where we're broadcasting from. Right. So that's what I have on actually. Okay. But I don't really want to like put my feet in the air, even though we do have cameras now. Right. You don't want to show those ceiling fan scars. Maybe during the break on your or ankles. Something. Yeah, like, but I know this is going to get recorded, so I'm going <laughs> to refrain from. Yeah. All right. But anyway, that's the definition. All right. Mm -hmm. So now you've all been adjudicated. Morning after flats. I didn't know. I was completely clueless. I thought it had something to do with uh, maybe some kind of feeling you have or a certain an illness associated with a, of a long night of partying. But it totally makes sense now that you've explained it. Nope. It's just a pair of shoes. I love it. So, uh, why did this not open up when I clicked it right? What are you oh, trying I to have, open? Oh, I have the wrong link. I put the wrong link uh, somewhere, and now I don't have my show prep up that I thought I had. Well, it's not I that you I'm so professional. The... I'm very professional, folks. You, you didn't put the wrong link in. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's God punishing you. Listeners, D Dale is doing an excellent job. He, it's you know what? There's this thing called Google. Mm -hmm. So, I'll have this thing. Yeah. Guide to Reddit. Uh, no, that's but not it the... does bring up one major question. What yeah. is your issue against religion? What if people were religiously intelligent? What would that mean exactly? I, I, I think know. those are that's a contradiction in terms to me because <laughs> religion implies is oh. is based on faith. If it's not based on faith, it's not religion, right? If if a if an alien came to Earth and displayed this amazing technology and and they seem to have this amazing moral structure that we wanted to emulate and we kind of sort of worshiped those people then they are real and for sure and verifiable via scientific method and you're just choosing to take after them that wouldn't be religion well, you might say well that's my religion is alienism but it it wouldn't really be a religion because it's based on science and verifiable evidence religion isn't based upon faith most people in religion say that their beliefs are based off of faith. All religion is is a group of people that have a structured belief system. Therefore, if you look at it one way, people that all agree on certain scientific facts could be scientifically religious in the sense of science. But being intellectually religious or things like that, it could just mean that you're very knowledgeable on religion. Huh. Well, being knowledgeable on religion is fine. Like, I used to be fairly well educated on Greek mythology, right? I, I enjoyed that a lot. I knew it was stories that people made up to tell moral lessons and different things like that, or just to tell cool stories and talk about sex a lot because a lot of the Greek gods were pervy mm. and everything. So that I think that's maybe why I appreciated it because there were... Yeah, mm. Greek and Roman mythology is fascinating. I also like some of the Norse... But I know the most about Mormon mythology. Quick announcement before we uh, before we take uh, go away for a little while here is uh, the Bu Bukaki Bros Meetup in Dublin on June first. That's on Reddit if you want to check that out. What? Yeah. So uh, this is Flaming Freedom, and we talk about LGBT subjects from a liberty perspective here on the Liberty Radio Network. We'll be right back, so stick around. Welcome back, folks. You're listening to Flaming Freedom for the first time in a long time back on the Liberty Radio Network. That's LRN.FM. And if you want to check out our site, it's FlamingFreedom.com. If you have a thought you want to share with us this morning live on the air, you will be on the air when you call in, fair warning, usually right away, then you can Skype us at the account In Your Head Shows. So go ahead and do that. I think you might have to add, we may have to add you to our contacts so that might be that may have to happen before it lets you call us i'm not sure how that's working out on skype and i haven't been able to find a setting that says don't make people do that so <laughs> we'll see about that this is your host dale 
and Jason and Lauren. We were trying to pull up the gay Reddit guide. I haven't managed to pull it up just yet, but uh, I found but, it. I believe in the gay bros section of Reddit. Go ahead. But you did manage to pull up uh, gay. Well, what, no, I guess it was the gay, Bukaki gay, gay Bros Buka, Bukaki. meet up. Does that mean does, because it's a bro thing? Does that mean that there's no women involved? Bros is I, traditionally it, Bukaki involves women. It would not or involve a single woman. It was posted in the gay bros section of Reddit, so I would say no women were involved in that. Hmm. And since I'm not, I'm not pulling this up right at the moment, and that's fine because this is another topic I'd actually like to talk about, and it it, it leads into it well is the gay bros section of Reddit. And it has been accused in the past, we've talked about it before, but I think it's worth reopening. Uh, it's been accused in the past of being kind of homophobic toward certain homo, uh, certain gay stereotypes, right? Because gay, there are gay people, there are stereotypical gays, and the whole notion of a gay bro is that they kind of don't fit that stereotype. But I have a beef with that idea. That I don't think that, that having a gay bro section is oh. is necessarily... And saying anything negative about people who don't fit the gay bros type. So some of us need need a definition of what a gay bro is, and I think I know what it is. It's it's like a like a yeah dude or a, a man, like a manly man, like a yes. Well, somebody to put it who's, simply, it's, who likes sports and likes yes. Okay. The essence of it is, hey dude, I totally like sports, man, and I like <laughs> working out. I like like bro. Do you even lift? And right. on top of that, man. <laughs> I totally dig your package, man. That's pretty good. That was, that was that's lovely. pretty good. I yeah. mean, obviously, that's a that's the stereotype, stereotype in the totally opposite direction. But the premise of it is something along those lines that, yeah, I'm basically into all, most of the things that, that, that straight guys tend to be into. I'm kind of a stereotypical guy, except that I'm gay. And uh, and so there's it's a certain type, just like, you know, drag queens are a type. And just like uh, you have guy, maybe guys who are effeminate, uh, you may have guys who are especially into Disney. That's a type in L.A., by the way, <laughs> like these Disney fans. Uh, whatever. It's a, you have certain interests, right? And you're trying to have, for instance, a discussion area where you can talk about the sorts of things that pe- the in- where you share interests. Well, I'm right? just going to throw it out that maybe they have a point about it discriminating and showing other things like i have typo negative blood and i think everyone else that has a different type of blood is trying to kill me that's true that's true yeah. your blood is that you're the universal donor so yeah. they want to kill you and take mm. your blood mm-hmm. either that or if they give me their blood it kills me so therefore that's right you can't receive anything blood except types for it's discriminating against me <laughs> just like them having a bro section Gay bros is discriminating against the fabulous non-bros. Right. Well, there should be a fabulous section of Reddit. And, well, I don't know. But but the <laughs> point is, there's gay Reddit. Uh, the gay Reddit guide talks about all these different areas of Reddit. It's no longer enough just to have an LGBT section. And it never should have been enough. It's just that's probably all we could hope for. You know, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> and uh, thank goodness that it's it's broadening out. Because the simple fact is, gay people aren't all the same. We, just because we share this one trait that we're attracted to other men or women are attracted to other women or bisexuals are attracted to either or both. Well, this does not unite us all under an umbrella necessarily. And so having a gay rose section is fine. Having like a drag queen section would be fine. I don't know if there is, I w- I'd be sh- I'm kind of surprised if there's not <laughs> and whatever. Right. And so, and then I think someone tried to post something in gay bros once and, and I think they got away with it. And no one cared, but it was, it bothered me. It was something about like a drag queen show or something like that. And I'm like, that just is off topic. It's not, it's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't belong in this topic, right? Because people come to this topic for a very, for a certain thing. It'd be like if I go into a bull riding section of Reddit and post stuff about baseball, that's off topic. It's not that they have a problem with baseball, well, right? I think a better example is. Let's say you go to an all-vegan food store, and somebody set, goes in there and starts putting up pictures of, hey, come eat at our steak restaurant. <laughs> is, is, that, is it like that? Yeah, it's pretty much there's this whole idea setting of 
Vegans ha aren't just vegans for health reasons, except for a very few amount, which I don't know if it's actually healthy. I have my suspicions. But beyond mm, that... I don't think it is. It's not. We can just say it's not. Yeah, so officially. they have this whole ideology <laughs> built up against it that generally you should do it because it's the more moral stance to take. And then for somebody to t post the exact opposite, which is your stereotypical steak restaurant, which glorifies the eating of animal products, it would just be inappropriate to put it up there. I, I can see that definitely, but I don't know if that's a good analogy for what we're talking about, because I really don't feel like gay bros have any beef with someone not being their type. They're just any beef. having a, there's just a, a sex. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> <laughs> they're just, uh, they're just, there's this section that's on certain, that's about certain topics and certain things are off topic. Mm -hmm. Just because it's gay doesn't mean it goes in gay bros. Yeah. Because there are a lot of different sections of Reddit for different gay things. On top of because, that, there's a lot of drag queens that aren't gay at all. They that's just true. enjoy dressing in so, drag. They're straight guys who like to be, do drag. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point, too. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's my thing about that. And it, and it all, and it makes me uh, think of the, the the other thing I was going to bring up is, are uh, are uh, this uh, along the same lines is are video games anti LGBT? They're popular primarily with a certain dynamic, a certain group, not not exclusively. Obviously, they're broadening out the number of people, the types of people who are interested in video games is broadening out quite a bit. But there's like a young male, typically young straight male, as the primary demographic of a lot of video game of the video video game industry right and so it tends to be reflective of what they want and and that's mm -hmm. the market caters to what people want right so and then somebody did a video which i will link to he's a he's a popular youtuber who does videos like this and he talked about lgbt representation representation in video games and how it's rare, and when it does happen, it seems predominantly negative. That was his point of view, anyway. That was his take on it. I don't play a lot of video games. And so, I, I play a very small few video games. I'm not the kind of person to, like, download or buy a lot of video games and play them. I play, like, MMORPGs occasionally. I get, I'll get into one and really get into it for a little while, maybe. Or I'll just not play games for a very long period of time. But I don't feel that educated on it. I don't feel like I can... Am, prepared to have a, a strong opinion at all on it. I only know what this guy told me in the video, right? And he had a certain point of view. And then I brought it up on, on, on Susan's Place, which is an LGBT forum, and I'm linking to that from today's show page as well. And most of the response was, eh, this is not really a big deal. I don't know if you'd call Susan's Place an LGBT forum. I think it's just oh, it's, more of a T, it, right? It, 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 so, it, you're right. No, I'm sorry. It focuses on, tra on transgender yeah. issues. Yes. So maybe maybe you. you should have gone to a different forum for that. Well, um, when it comes to video I'm, games... I'm, joking. I'm giving you guys a hard time. I've played a decent amount, and I haven't... I, nothing comes to mind where I've seen negativity. I've seen a lot of absence of homosexuality, but I've also seen a few games that are starting to come out, like Dragon Age, which... Oh, you that's can actually very have positive. gay sex in it. Yeah, and gay relationships. It doesn't relationships. show anything, unfortunately. But. And mm. well, he pointed out some of them, they're frequently villains and even like monsters or anti-human, mm. not human. And that was his thing. That was what he said. Again, don't have a strong opinion on it. What are your thoughts? You can Skype us at In Your Head Shows. We'd love to hear from you. Fleming Freedom. We'll be right back. You are listening to a live episode via Liberty Radio Network of Flaming Freedom, where we talk about LGBT issues from a libertari libertarian perspective. Or I also refer to it as LGBT libertarians just shooting the poop. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is your host, Dale. And Dason. And Lauren. Let you me... know, some of us actually have libertarian perspectives, but we might not actually be a libertarian. Oh, okay. That might be another another show topic. Libertarian perspectives, but not actually libertarian. I mm -hmm. I think that kind of... I think I have identity I think being issues. a libertarian means you have a libertarian perspective, or I think that's what the definition is. Yes, but, <laughs> but you can have a libertarian perspective and not be a libertarian. On a particular issue, yeah. No, I think on, to be, on many issues. Uh, are, okay. I, what are you, well, what's your definition of libertarian, then? I have no idea. See, see to me, it's sort of cool, an, a tautology. Cool in New Hampshire. It's a tautology. Libertarian re refers to a certain point of view on su on subjects, like a liberty, 
a liberty oriented point of view. And so having a libertarian perspective is what a libertarian would have. Well, the problem right? with libertarian wow, this is, is it's so yeah, this this is let, getting, let's this spend, is let's spend about five bad. minutes talking about semantics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were talking about gay, LGBTs in video games and is it a problem or should we care? Is there actually a problem and, and how much should we care? And for instance, if it's uh, I, uh, some of the excuses I heard when I was discussing this on on Susan's place was, well, this is what straight men of a certain age want. And so that's just reflective of that. But a lot of things are reflective of that. But if, if for instance, homophobia is a is a thing that that particular demographic uh, represents then does that then make it okay? I don't think so. I think it's kind of, but, but some other people are just saying, well, a lot of times it's not relevant. I, I, although relationships or, and or sex is uh, coming up more and more in video games because they have interactions with characters as a big element of it. Instead of just a guy going from left to the right side of the screen, shooting things like old school video games were incredibly simplistic. Now they're getting, now they're like a virtual reality experience where you can experience all sorts of things through this virtual world. And one of those might be your your role playing sort of with these other characters, and you have to go to a certain character and convince them to give you something you need so that you can go fulfill a quest or to do something for you, or you need to do something for them so they'll do something for you, and so forth. And then sometimes it gets into romance, and it makes it more real, right? Yeah. And if you don't it's include giving you something you need, yes, and everybody yeah, that, needs a little romance. That makes sense. <laughs> as far as the villain thing goes, um, yeah, <clears throat> I think. I, I, certainly we talked about in cinema, a lot of times the villain is, uh, is LGBT of some kind, whether they're trans, like the, well, I suppose the Buffalo Bill from, uh, that, that film, uh, de -de -de -de. what is it called? Does anybody Silence know? Silence of the <clears throat> Lambs or Red Dragon. Oh, is it called Red Dra Dragon? Uh, I believe that's well, one anyway, of them. Well, anyway, I was referring to Silence of the Lambs or the, the villain in 300. Um, so there, there's examples of the villain being, um, sort of uh, in the queer spectrum. Right. Um, and I think that that still comes from the fact that uh, it's considered outside the norm. I think it's it's still not, it, it's certainly less than 50%, maybe 10% of the world. It, I, you can't even put a percentage on these things, but it's non-traditional and it's something that you don't see every day. And so right. I think when somebody sees like, like if there was a woman walking down the street and she had a beard, People are like, whoa, what is that? Mm -hmm. And it, it's it's frightening um, for some. But should it be? I, it, it shouldn't be. LGBT should folks be. are becoming very well known. Most everyone knows someone, but, if not more than one person. But people get afraid of things when they don't when they don't know what it is. I agree with you, and that's a big issue, and that's partly why we're on the air and things like that. But well, but let's... but that's so we shouldn't be dismissive of video games may reflect that. But we shouldn't be dismissive of it. What gets me is is to what extent are they lagging way behind the rest of the culture, right? If you go to the, like in the movies and TV, our representation has exploded. It, it's been very positive and encouraging, and our video games lagging behind that. And again, there's a lot of people on Susan's place, for instance, saying, "Yeah, it's not bad. It's not a big deal, and I don't care. I don't think it's a problem." There, maybe there aren't a lot of are there a lot of video game players on Susan's place? Yeah, there's actually threads started where people say, what games are you playing and things like that. There's quite a few gamers on there. Mm. A, a few G-A-Y mers. That's clever. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> there's a thre there's a gamers thread, by the way, a G-A-Y mers thread on Reddit that you can also check out. Part of the uh, gay Reddit sub guide or gay Reddit, gay subreddit guide that we were going to talk about and couldn't find the link for because I f messed up our show prep. But anyway, hmm. well, <laughs> oh well. So let's go into so, dysphoria a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, speaking right. of games, that's uh, that's certainly a game where uh, that the the it's, creator of it is trying to actually do the opposite and really reach out and and educate people on um, right. what it means to be uh, in that spectrum of of gender I'm gonna, queerness. I'm going to try and set this up so that people can actually watch it um, on the video. Ooh, that'd be cool. Yeah, just give me just a moment to um, do that. Yeah, part of um, when I was listening to it, or not listening, I'm always talking about listening because we're on a radio show, but when I was uh, playing it myself, um, a lot of what I appreciated was uh, was the sound as well. So. Oh, okay. Let's <clears throat> let's hear that. It makes I, it makes a lot of noise, actually. And actually, at the, at the very end of it, too, like it was, it was really moving. Like, whoa. We're, we got we got limited time, so I gotta 
Okay. Maybe we can... Wow. That's pretty intense. Let me lower that volume a little. There we go. Sorry about that, listeners. I should have had this going because it takes a little while to get started. In a word. And now you... The only way you can interact yeah. is by pressing the arrows. And the first one is level one, gender BS. And you try to move with your arrows through here. And obviously it's tricky. And it's very frustrating. And now you, oh, oh, feminists don't want to accept me as a woman. I know about this. So you got to block. It's, it's, it's not so much a video game as just a little movie that you interact with a little bit. But it's adorable in certain ways. It's really you know? adorable. So I will let people, and then here's a little shaving simulator. Oh, cut myself. Oh, dear. All right. Yeah, this is my favorite one, where, where, oh, where the, oh, okay. we'll where the character's, like, trying to go through the restroom and, like, not get seen. And is all nervous. Whoa, go, 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 go. Oh, oh, I messed up. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, I actually made it through that one pretty quick. All right. But maybe that's because I'm a pro. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, you also pass really well, right? So if you pass really well, you're obviously going to have less issues than a lot of people. I really have trouble talking about that or responding oh. to people saying like, oh, well, you pass really well. I, I don't like the word I, pass. Is it the word itself? It's, no, it's oh. just the like I'm I just need more mirrors, I guess, oh. to know if that's true or not. <laughs> that's. I think that's typical. I think uh, most. And here's the thing. You're looking in the mirror every day. Mm, I try not to. Well, <laughs> you have to get ready and stuff. Well, at least a little bit. You have to look in the mirror every day. And whereas like you go away for two weeks or three weeks or whatever, and someone sees you again and you're dressed a little differently and all that stuff. And they're like, wow, you look very different than the last time I saw you. Mm -hmm. And they're seeing that. You're not seeing it as much because you keep looking in the mirror every single day. So I think this is common. Almost every, I've seen a lot of experiences of people online, whether it's a YouTube channels or it's YouTube channels, for instance, of female to male transgender people and things like that who are saying, um, and then what they'll do is they'll do a montage of snapshots of videos from, or very brief clips from videos over a couple of years of being in transition. And you see the dramatic change from, between the beginning and the end. It's dramatic, but any one from one to the next doesn't, you don't see anything. Right. But it's mm -hmm. definitely happening. Yeah. So hold, hold out hope, we, folks. We definitely need to make, or I need to make a uh, a video like that based on Flaming Freedom because I I've sort of figured out like this is sort of a chronicle of my my own development and uh, the way things have changed and I think it would be fun to make a video of it too because most if you actually go on YouTube and look up uh, like transition videos most of them actually are just images. Um, okay. But I think it would be fun to have one that's like edited all together. And I love the idea, and I would yeah. love for that to be a Flaming Freedom video that we'll post up on our YouTube channel if you're okay with it. But you have yeah, to get some... well as long as I can, yeah, edit it. You would be the one in charge of it. It would be your thing. But I would love to post it on our channel. There's even I can even start with the, there's a interview with uh, Ridley Dave Ridley from RidleyReport.com. Right. He was interviewing me, and my hair was all short, and I was wearing like a business suit and um, very very masculine looking and. That's probably where we'll, where we'll start and we'll finish somewhere around here. That sounds excellent. And you could get some good classic 80s music to make it a nice, amazing montage. <laughs> Perfect. It is a montage. You need 80s music, right? Exactly. Mm, that's how that works. <laughs> I, I'm with you there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so Dysphoria was recommended by this guy who did the, the videos and talked about LGBT folks in video games. It was really moving. Yeah, so for, for, to um, me anyway, check it out. I, I appreciated it. Check it out. It's been out for a little while. Uh, let's listen to some of the sponsors that make shows like this possible through the Liberty Radio Network and stick around because we're coming back for the second chunk of our show in just a few minutes here on the Liberty Radio Network. This is Flaming Freedom. You are listening to LGBT Libertarians Shooting the Poop on Flaming Freedom. Welcome back. This is your host, Dale. And Dason. And Lauren. Hi. Now, yes. And I wanted to tell everyone that uh, we were talking about gay bros earlier. Just a quick update. The description of this subreddit is gear, grub, guns, and guys. I believe that's that's what it is. I just caught that. So we cut you off, unfortunately, 
last segment, Lauren, when you were expressing your thoughts on dysphoria. Yeah, that's dysphoria with the number four. It's a a flash based. I think it's flash based. Is it not? It or I don't know. It, has, it, has it kind vibe. of seems, it has a vibe. I'm not sure if it is or not. Um, and you can play it with the key, the arrow keys in your computer, and um, it was really really fun. I I loved it. It was the <laughs> cutest, most adorable game. I thought I've it was really adorable. Ever. I, yeah, there's there's a certain charm to it. it. It's simplistic in a way, kind of like South Park, in a way that has charm. Yeah. Um, and, it, and as opposed to someone just so, I, he could have uh, or sorry not he she could have put uh uh the maybe written something a, a two page essay or or something like that and maybe I don't know how many people would have experienced that versus this or if they would have experienced that in the same way it's such mm. a creative way to convey your feelings about something well a lot of the, the there's certain parts in the game that that are a little frustrating and and i think that she had a great balance between like being frustrating because like if you get too frustrated you'll probably quit the game so she, oh, she right. had it just yeah. right it's, it's beautiful um but a lot of it just it really it like really spoke to me i was like yes this is what it's like like well, maybe not exactly. So but, you could re- you could relate. But I was like, on yeah, like I'm so frustrated that I can't get <laughs> into this part of the. Right, the last part of the the part we were showing people. The last part you said you related to really well, which was going into the women's restroom and and in ca- trying well, to avoid one, that, any contact with people. I love that one people. because I, I I just zipped right through it. I was like, bam. <laughs> you you knew you knew how to deal with that yeah, crap. Um, well, here's the thing too. It's so ridiculous to me. You hear these straw man arguments from super religious folks. I'll, I'm going to say religious folks. That's really not the point. Bigoted folks, uh, whether they're religious or not. You hear this, these straw man arguments from them. They have these notions or they present these notions, these horror stories about trans people. In bathrooms? Yes. Yeah. Going in the, and, the, and obviously they, they're trying to go in there and then flaunt their unusual genitalia, for instance, at people in the bathroom and it's so completely 180 degrees the opposite of everything I've ever heard any trans person say about what it's like going to the bathroom and that and that depicts it where they're really just they're trying to avoid people they're trying to not be noticed they're trying to not make a scene mm-hmm. and everyone else they're the ones that are making a scene about it it's not the trans people doing that yeah um it- it does take a little getting used to um, if you're a uh, male to female person, because um, men's restrooms tend to just be everybody does avoid each other, like which is funny because mm. oh, they put right. those urinals right next to each other. Right? And, like, <laughs> right. I, I hate that. Yeah, that seems kind of awkward. It is ridiculous. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of. I'm actually a fan of unisex bathrooms with more but, privacy in them. Yeah, same here. Go ahead and have um, stall. Go ahead and have urinals but put them inside a stall well i I think in other in other countries that's probably true but where we are in this part of the world it's very rare um but the liberty forum had really excellent bathrooms um oh and in fact that was well i won't go into the details they were very private i agree i remember that they were very private the stalls were you really felt secure in there a lot of people are just pee shy or whatever they're they're crowd shy <laughs> mm. and even if they're in a bathroom of then they're they, they don't have any sort of trans issues to deal with they're in a bathroom for people of the same gender they're still uncomfortable because they don't have the privacy they'd really like to have for that kind of that's a very private act none of us wants to yeah do that around people and I, peeing as well a lot of people are pee shy guys are pee shy plenty of them and so really the whole idea of a unisex bathroom it's not just for this. It's not like it's something you do, especially for trans people. This is something that would benefit everyone because for one, it would benefit a lot of businesses that didn't, wouldn't have to have this really elaborate structure twice. Right. So just for cost purposes, it would be so much more cost effective to make bathrooms where the stalls are much more private. You could share sinks. Men and women can use a sink and wash their hands. It would be safer. Women should feel safer because a guy who has negative intentions towards women who might want to, who might be a rapist or something like that, he can go into a women's restroom and have free reign. There's no one there to stop him particularly. There's no other men there to stop him, especially if he sees a woman go in there and he knows no one else is in there. He can go in there and then and he, no man's going to walk in on them. Right. At the very least. Right. So uh, in that sense, it could be safer. It would be uh, you wouldn't be waiting as long for restrooms and things like that. Uh, it would it would equalize, you know, the, the long line in front of the women's room and the short line in front of the men's room or the no line in front of the men's room. Right. Because men are just going in, peeing, standing up, leaving. 
they would still be able to do that, but it would be, it would equalize things a lot, certainly, right? Because mm -hmm. now you're not competing for a very limited resource with, with uh, and then men having free reign with this other resource that women can't use because it's a men's restroom. You know, it actually might be. There's so many reasons for it is what I'm saying. Go ahead. Holding Jason. up some really negative things that are coming up by separating the bathrooms to men and women. You're sexualizing going to the bathroom. And that yeah. might be where fecophilia and golden showers comes from. That whole fetishizing that <laughs> could come from the fact that, well, it's sexual. We have to make it separate because it's. There's nothing sexy about pooping. Maybe. I agree with you, but not everyone does. Mm. <laughs> he has a point, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah. We need Neil on the show right yeah, now. Right. <laughs> um, right. Tell us your grammar lesson real quick, because we, we mentioned that. Really you know, quick. Or, how quick you want it? Uh, well, we're, well, I'll go we're on segments now, so yeah. try to finish before the next segment. We do want to talk about, best. I do want to talk about Free Keen and yeah, Stop Free Keen and, and their editing of our podcast. Yes, I think that would be worth discussing yeah uh grammar lesson all right i can actually make this really short um so you at the beginning of the show i think used uh you said transgender or you well, actually you said transgendered with an ed and corrected end, myself yeah. and then corrected yourself to transgender here's the grammar lesson in one sentence transgender is an adjective the end so Right. Like I as opposed to something that you did. Yeah. Like it was a one time cannot, thing and then you're done. So if you put an ar an article like if you say that person is a transgender, that is that is wrong. It is not a noun. It is not um mm. Yeah, that's very inappropriate. That's like calling someone it. Like is transsexual completely out of the vernacular for the most part now? You could use well, I I don't know. I, I don't really I don't know. I I have no idea. Sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's all right. I don't think anybody... Call in. Call, call in to uh, Skype us at In Your Head Shows if you have thoughts on that. Go ahead, Lauren. I, I think that people wouldn't self-identify as a transsexual, but I think that people might call be called that. Um, but well, I, I, have, I, don't I think, have a beef I don't think with it's that off, because off I think in general you should call people what they want to be called until they've given you a reason to <laughs> do otherwise. What if they don't give a reason, though? Like I, That's me. I usually don't say... Right, like we had that libertarian I said, debate I, at the beginning. Oh, oh, was, no! I'm saying unless they unless they've given you a reason not to exercise the normal respect you show for a, a person, yes. a stranger. And, like, and speaking of respect, like if they've disrespected you, then <laughs> I'm yeah. just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> never but, mind. Never mind that. But to be don't call people that what they don't want to be called. No, please don't. And to, I have to. I have to kind of. Add, I have to kind of make a note because I I do call people things that I'm sure they don't want to be called. <laughs> <laughs> but, like equating in religion with irrationality and things like that. <laughs> and you're chuckling about it. It's hilarious. I'm, so, I, I find it hilarious. Be very respectful get... unless somebody says, well, dude, don't be dissing me. <laughs> that, is a, that is a good rule. Um, but to get back on track here and to, to kind of reach out to all the LRN listeners there, um, you shouldn't call a trans person it ever. You you know it? use use he use she but don't ever 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 who call. does that that's I, really horrible I've heard it frequently actually it's it's because people don't know oh, right people uh, think that there's some binary and then you you just no it's okay just pick one and if it if it's wrong they'll correct you but it I, is I, so I can imagine saying that it's person horrible exactly. of course it is it, it if is someone says the that they are trying ever. to be dehumanizing yeah well no no there's some people who weren't um, oh okay but. Hmm. All right. Anyway. Well, thank you for letting us know about that. Transgender is an adjective. It's an adjective. Yes. Thank you and so much. When we get back, we're going to talk about Stop Free Keen and how they edited one of our podcasts in order to take out anything negative that we may have said about them, <laughs> I think. <laughs> but we'll, we'll decide when we come back. You're listening to Flaming Freedom. Stick around. We're going to be back in no time. You are listening to Flaming Freedom Live. This is your chance to share any thoughts on the show. We are coming up on the last uh, portion of the show. So if you want to share, have any thoughts on things we've talked about this episode, this is your chance. You can Skype us at In Your Head Shows and tell us what you think. This is your host, Dale. And Jason. And Lauren as well. I want to remind everyone you can go to flamingfreedom.com and find out all kinds of cool stuff about us. You can go to Google Plus and find us. You can go to facebook.com slash flamingfreedom. 
and click like there and tell all your friends about us and make sure you click like and share on episodes so that more people can hear about us if you do enjoy in fact enjoy the show lauren uh you wanted to add a little more on this uh on your grammar lesson about oh. the word transgender versus transgendered yeah i did um i i we actually thought of uh well while we were away listening to the sponsors um a word that's actually uh, starts with trans as well and that is transcendental right Right. I, I ha, you would say, and that's an adjective as well. You would say I had a transcendental experience. You wouldn't say I, I was transcendental or it something. It sounds really or like, bizarre like you when you like put it that do, way. Like, right. Do it to someone like, like you, I'm going to transgender you. I mean, that might be some kind I'm of like, transcendental lies. Yeah. You. <laughs> it's just, so it's, um, and well, also I, it's also not a noun too. So you're not going to say something like, um, like, I, I, at my workplace, there is a transgender. No, that's not appropriate either. Um, well, transgendered is an adjective technically, although it is, it does seem weird. And, and, and I think, I think another thing I've heard people say is that it's, it, it, is that it implies that it was something you did like a one-time thing and now you, it's done or something, except that it's still with you. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And, and I've heard many people say transition is something that is a lifetime experience. Most people um, that I hear, I mean, I, I use the term gender variant individual cause it's, it's something different and it's just, I, I just do it to be a, be a kind of mean to people. Well, not mean. I would never be mean, um, right. but I, I, I do it because I don't like identifying with, the entire like trans spectrum of, of stuff. Sure. Like, I just want to be a sure. person. And so that's why I do that. But uh, a lot of trans people just call themselves, like I just said, trans people. Yeah. Um, or just and that, trans. that's a good way to go too. Yeah. If, if you're kind of nervous about using transgender, trans, trans just, is always just call, fairly safe. Yeah. Fairly, fairly like, safe. Oh, to do. Hey. So free keen is an activist group that focuses on Keene, New Hampshire, and they're a libertarian primarily group. And then there was a group that came up that doesn't like them that sort of organized into Stop Free Keen. And they have a website, and they linked, they created a, a video which edits, it's, it's really just audio, but they posted it on YouTube, so it's technically a video now, that edits one of our segments where Neil and I had a conversation about, Keen, about Free Keen and about an activist who did a survey. It was very unscientific, so don't apply too much credit to it, but just to get a gist, and he got about 98% of the respondents that he randomly stopped people on the street for something like that, saying they had a very negative opinion of Free Keen. So they, they sort of, they, if you listen to this segment that Stop Free Keen posted about uh, from our podcast, it's heavily edited. They're about five times minimum where it fades out kind of quickly and then fades back in and we're talking again and something has been missed, who knows what. And so I listened to the whole segment again and they cut out about a third of the entire conversation. And uh, it, it seems to me their, their explanation for this was that, uh, let me pull this up. It, it certainly is clearly edited. Um, right. As someone who spends time actually editing audio, I, I, can, I, I picked it up. But, oh, it's but, very obvious. But other people, yeah. You don't I, think I, they'll I, notice it? I think everyone's going to notice it. Yeah, everybody will. To their credit, and I said this before, to their credit, they did link back to the to our site, so you can go, so people can go if they have the initiative. They can go to our site and listen to the unedited version. But it seems like they're trying to discourage them. What they say, their justification for all this editing is relevance, length, and some graphic sexual content. Okay, first of first off, length. It went from about fifteen minutes to about ten minutes of talking. I think so. All right, if you wanted to. <laughs> it, it, that would make more sense to me if they cut out some really key segments and left it down to like two minutes. <laughs> but they, they, uh, and then they said, rel and relevance is up to the, that's up to the person listening. And it feels to me like they chose relevance based on were we saying positive things or were we saying negative things about free keen? Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like if we were, if we were reinforcing what they wanted people to hear, then that's all of a sudden they consider that relevant. <laughs> I suppose it was relevant to the message that they were trying to say. <laughs> yes, it was relevant to to the person editing it. <laughs> and then it said some graphic sexual content. Okay, I listened to the entire segment. I was listening very hard and trying to catch anything like that. You know, you might just be uh, comfortable with Neil or like listening to him or it's just part of your normal thing. But I mean, he can be pretty graphic. 
He said nipple at one point. Yeah, that that is really sc- nipples are scary. They're Whoa. very scary for some people. That's graphic sexual content. Mm-hmm. He did mention nipple. Now here's the thing. He did uh, at one point. I pointed out that he was watching porn while we were having the conversation, mm. or looking at pictures, not so much watching porn, but looking at naked pictures. So it was it was pornographic images, and I mocked him for it. We we mentioned it very briefly, and then moved on. But he did mention like something looking conical shaped, without saying what it was, and then a nipple. So that was the graphic sexual content, but they they edited like six times, and I and if you're listening to this conversation, you know there's no way we inserted graphical sexual content like six times throughout this this segment. So I just think it's kind of weird that you would edit something we said that heavily, and I just hope that people, if they listen to that, will be encouraged to go, oh, that's heavily edited. I'm going to go listen to what the full statement of what they said so that I can hear it in the full context. Because you remove a lot of context when you edit something that heavily. And it comes across as pretty fishy, I think. So be aware of that. If, if, you're, if, you're, if you really have something meaningful to say, you shouldn't have to do those kinds of tactics. Mm. I, I think the main point that you bring up is that it is a little fishy. I don't think anything that came out um, from that recording or that edited version was was bad. I think it 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 didn't portray flaming freedom in a weird kind of light or anything. No, I don't. But, I don't think that was the intent was to make us look bad. It didn't. They didn't seem to. They in fact they were. We had said things they wanted us mm-hmm. wanted people to hear. So in a way they were like, look, these guys used to be free keen. Well, Neil wasn't, well, but I was. Yeah. Yeah. He used to be free keen. And he doesn't like them anymore. Well, that's a very oversimplified representation of what i said mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, i had some beef with some things they do there's big difference they certainly so. were up front though they they said immediately you know, they, this has been edited it's also like written below the video on their web page yes and it's 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 very much a part of the video like them stating that this is edited so i, I and, and I, they I, linked I give them it. credit for that and they linked the unedited version so that i get yes yeah. I, I i do yeah, I, I, give them credit for that mm-hmm. all right yeah i mean there there are people who have strong opinions about different things going on well, and hey, that's understandable. When you listen to the edited parts, did you play it backwards at half <laughs> speed? Because maybe then it had some sexual content that you're missing. Oh, See? well, I just have a very sexy voice. Mm. And a lot of times when people say they're listening to me on the air and they start becoming tremendously sexually aroused just from the sound of my voice because I just have one of those voices, you know. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, I no, was one, no one's buying earlier. this. No, I hate no. my voice. I, my voice is horrible. Yeah, me too. Well, not, I, not your voice. <laughs> Although I do some good voices if you listen to the cool promo I made, which mm. will be in this episode somewhere. So most of you have probably already heard it if you're listening to the downloaded version. Thank you for listening to Flaming Freedom. This has been Dale. And Dason. And Lauren. Be sure to listen to us next week at 10 a.m. via the Liberty Radio Network.